When you're crazy rich, life can be a dream. Jim's pretty wealthy, but he's not even the richest guy at Shroom High. There's always someone richer than you. Ruby is the richest girl in school. She's enrolled in three schools at once. And her parents bought her a private helicopter. But not everyone is rich. Dylan can't afford any of that. All he has is a lucky clover. Jim and Ruby are constantly competing to see who's better. Every class turns into a battle to prove which one is the best. Their art styles are pretty different. Jim is all about abstract art, and Ruby just wants to show how rich she is. But Dylan is naturally talented, and he can turn ink blocks into a masterpiece. He doesn't care about money. He's the luckiest guy ever. So he's great at everything he tries. Walking is so old-fashioned. Why wear out your precious feet if the future is now? But nothing what? compares to how Dylan gets around. <laughs> He's riding around on brush skates. The cleaner is freaked out, but they look cool. When Jim is having trouble studying, he asks people with a lot of free time. Scientists! Dylan gets help from the cleaner and from his luck. As for Ruby, she's pretty open about the fact that she's getting help. Nobel winners are taking her test in front of everyone. But they have different methods, so there's gonna be a good old-fashioned debate. The noise makes it impossible to concentrate, and it might get too much attention. Then the teacher will get mad, and the consequences will be severe. Like a bad grade! One, seven, two, no water. Jim gets one, though. Oh. The teacher figured out that he's cheating. Oh. Mm. But nobody noticed Dylan. <gasps> and he even got an A+. Plus. <laughs> Who knew the janitor was that smart? Uh -huh. e Jim never brings a lot of things to school with him. His elegant case is full of money, gold, mm -hmm. and his favorite pen. Well, Ruby's not impressed. Her case has even more money, even more gold, and her favorite planner, which is studded with VBS diamonds. Everyone's jealous, including Jim. But the planner has its drawbacks. It's so shiny that Ruby has never even written anything in it. But Dylan has the weirdest school supplies. He loves vintage stuff, so he carries a bag, an inkwell, and his great great grandpa's quill. Everyone loves lunch. You can eat and get a break from studying, but not everyone's lunch is the same. Instead of a burger, Dylan gets to eat a tiny little chicken egg laid by a tiny malnourished chicken. But he doesn't mind. Ruby can afford whatever food she mm. wants. Since she's so rich, she can buy any dish. But instead, every day she gets a container holding a new Michelin-starred chef, shrunken down using secret technology that only one percenters know about. But it doesn't always work. Sometimes the chefs run into trouble in the kitchen and Ruby ends up hungry, and the chefs end up fired. Everyone laughs at Dylan for being so poor. But he doesn't mind. Come on. Even though his locker looks rough on the outside, okay. the inside is amazing. Dylan is happy to take Jim and Ruby on a tour. They're really impressed by the locker. There's a huge room in there. Not even they okay. have something like that. Dylan's commute is super short, too, because he lives in there. So what if he's not rich? He'll share what he has with his guests, but they don't appreciate his hospitality. Okay. 
Dylan doesn't need money to be happy. That's what his clover is for. He never lets go of it. Jim is super jealous of Dylan, and he decided to steal the clover. But getting the lucky clover is way harder than he thought. Jim thought he'd get lucky, but he was wrong. When you're a millionaire, you should look rich. Every day before class, Jim goes to a stylist. And he's not alone. Ruby does the same thing. Dylan doesn't really care. The janitor cuts his hair. That looks pretty special. His hair ends up all over the place. And he's not the only one who ends up looking different. Jim is trying to steal Dylan's clover. But so is Ruby. She pretends that she's not interested in the clover, but interested in Dylan. She got pretty close to him, but she didn't know the clover had a guard with sharp what? teeth. This hamster is Dylan's best friend. Dylan is really lucky, but he's also a little weird. He wears a bow tie every day. What? Well, it's not ready yet. It needs a little time to grow into a full bow tie. But it even gave him the power of flight. He can't control it yet, but who said training butterflies was easy? We can't live without technology. The richer you are, the cooler gadgets you have. Ruby is living in 3008, while Jim is so 2000 and late. As for Dylan, he's still using a typewriter. You might think that's weird, but just wait. Dylan is so good at using his typewriter that he can even play games on it. Nobody else knew that that was an option. But Dylan has amazing luck. You think rich people never cry? Sure they do. Even over a big zit. But they can handle that kind of thing way easier than a normal person. Ruby has a whole team of experts on her payroll. And one of them is the first person she calls when she has a zit. He offers her an experimental treatment that'll get rid of her acne forever. Just be careful. It's still in the experimental phase and hasn't been tested a lot. But Ruby, stop paying attention at get rid of her acne forever. She should have kept listening. She put it all on her face and was horrified. The lotion is so strong, it turned her into a baby. <laughs> but luckily, the inventor planned ahead and created the antidote already. Ruby, pay more attention next time. Thank you. If you need to perk up, have some coffee. That's Jim's favorite drink. He spends tons of money on it. But he's never tried the kind of okay. fancy stuff that Ruby drinks. She gets coffee from the world's best plantations, hand-delivered by pilots who are also baristas. They roast the beans right on the plane. That's really something that the richest girl in the world deserves. Spilling it would be a shame. But Thanks. Ruby did it. The coffee is ruined! But not to Dylan. He's never tried anything this yummy before. He even got some on his mask. Ruby is so upset. So Jim does something nice and offers her his coffee. Even though it's not as fancy as hers. Sometimes school can be boring. Jim likes rocking in his chair. But you shouldn't do that in the chair that might fall. So he replaces his chair with a rocking chair. Ruby wants a new chair, too. She orders the most expensive chair in the world. She can afford it. Soon enough, she gets a real throne. This will show how rich she is. The richest girl in school. But that's not enough. You can't sit on a throne without a crown. But you also can't do things without thinking about the consequences. The knights aren't happy that their king got robbed. They're here to take his belongings back. Ruby doesn't want to let go of her throne. Even though Dylan suggested a compromise. She's not happy about it. She's too rich to sit on a box. And too heavy to sit on a servant.
If our trio ended up in Squid Game, that would be crazy! Imagine what they do with the candy challenge! Jim wouldn't use a needle, he'd use a sewing machine. And barely finish the task. Yeah. While Ruby's laser vision aces the assignment. <gasps> Oops. Dylan would just use the candy as a pin. If you think Jim is ever not flexing, you don't know him at all. Once, he brought a gold globe to class. But Ruby still had something better. It's a hologram of the Earth that predicts the future. But it's going too oh far God. forward. What? Nobody wants to see that. Seeing the future <laughs> is one thing, but Dylan is stuck in the past. He still thinks the Earth is flat. He doesn't want to listen to science. Dylan is weird, but nobody bullies him much. It's useless. He's so lucky that pranks don't even touch him. While he has his lucky okay. clover, he's untouchable, no matter what Ruby and Jim try. It was all useless. He's way too lucky. But Jim and Ruby are at risk of getting expelled. No, 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 no. What? If not for Dylan, they totally would have been kicked out. Thank you. Hmm. Ruby and Jim are so grateful to Dylan for saving them. They okay. even prepared a surprise for him. Believe it or not, they did something nice. They surprised him with an apartment. He's so happy. But before they can celebrate his new place, he needs to get his stuff moved in. But that doesn't take long. What? All his things fit in one box. <sighs> Dylan decides to thank his new friends by splitting up his lucky clover between them. So is a mysterious locker he's never seen before. It used to be covered in warning signs, and Dylan didn't want to open it. But Jim does whatever he wants, and he can't exactly breathe. What's in this locker? At first glance, everything seems the same. Except, it seems like nerds are trendy now. Even the jocks are scared of them. To people from another universe, it's hard to believe their eyes. It's like this world was made for Dylan, and now he's one of them. But that's not the only weird thing. Turns out in this world, Ruby's not the cleaning lady. The janitor is doing her job and vice versa. This parallel universe is crazy. But the outfit and mop clearly know that they belong with Ruby. No matter how hard she tries to get rid of them, they keep coming back. Let's check on Dylan again. So far, Dylan is enjoying the new world. The group of math sharks is pretty diverse. They're like the sharks of science. Because whenever they're not flirting with girls, they're running experiments. No wonder nerds are popular. They can easily turn their old phones into the latest iPhone, thanks to the miracle of science. The only person who's not having fun here is Jim. It seems like he's going to be the same here as he was in his own world. Although he did become a phone for a while. He would have stayed that way, but Dylan felt bad and used his printer to bring Jim back. Jim feels like a fish in water in this universe. He was the class clown before and still is. But he didn't know how they treat jokesters in this universe. In this world, 
Nerds are king, and everyone else has to bow down. They don't take kindly to strangers. They subject them to an ancient tradition, a battle to the death in Dungeons and Dragons. Only the worthiest warrior may pass through the Dungeon of Judgment. Does Jim respect this ancient tradition? Of course not! He doesn't respect anything. Even in this world, Jim has already gotten a bad reputation. The nerds are worried, but they won't let Jim win. In their world, nerds rule. Even games have magical powers, so the reverse card works on his pranks and turns the pranks back on him. Every time he tries to prank someone, it fails! But he's not done! What? To Jim's horror, the worst thing you could be in this universe what? is oh. dumb. Hey! Now Jim is the laughing stock of the school. He's even nominated for a stupidity award. Meanwhile, Dylan is becoming popular. All the coolest girls in the school love him. But they treat Jim like he has a disease. He's a total outsider, and he needs to do something about this. He and Miss Ruby decided to escape. But the portal is closed! There's nothing in the weird locker. What's wrong? Right, they got here all together, so they can probably only leave all together. This won't work without Dylan. If we want to get back to our world, we need to find him. Or we could be stuck here forever in this crazy universe ruled by nerds. And where Ruby can't lose these janitor clothes. Long ago, the nerds lived together in harmony. But everything changed when the outsiders attacked. The outsiders don't want to accept their traditions. They're breaking all the rules and acting weird. Only Dylan can fully get integrated here. Jim is trying to fit in with the sharks of science. They're treating him as their guinea pig. They told him that's a big honor. Who knows, maybe in a couple of years he can be a nerd too. He just needs to survive a few experiments and come back from space somehow. These nerds are tougher than Dylan thought. The only girl in a school full of jocks? Check it out on Troom Troom Tricks.